my 12 is complete and uh, I don't know what it was but there's this like fine glittery stuff all over everything I probably been breathing it all night I did see it flying around in the tent when it was windy what are you gonna do but check out my feet I got a couple pieces of tape got another piece of tape over here gonna put some anti chafe cream right there and I'll be ready to go it's only day 12 so I'm gonna try to make like 18 today what's interesting is a lot of people are going to Idlewild from the highway right by Paradise Valley but there's still like a good 16 miles of PCT that's open I don't know if they're all gonna redo that at some point or I don't know and the funny thing too is the water reports from that area is really non-existent it seems like a lot of people are just skipping it and going straight to Idlewild. I don't know. It's open though. So. I just got to the Tula Spring intersection and I noticed there's a note on there. Let's see what it says. I don't know if I could do this with two hands without the note flying away. No flow from pipe on 330 at noon. Make sure to close valve even if no flow. Continue on road. Water flowing at Creek. Seattle Tony 41. Look how shiny this rock is. It's like wherever it's chipped off. It's like layers. It's super shiny. Pretty wild, it's all over. Down here there's a whole bunch of shiny parts. I don't know if you could see it in the camera as well, but super shiny. It's cool. Way out there, there appears to be a fire. It's actually kind of making this whole valley hazy. It doesn't look big, but... Huh, wonder where that's at. I'm at mile 139.6 or so. I'm just walking along. I'm keeping an eye out for things. And then I hear rattling right off to the side. I couldn't see it. All I did was take off. <laughs> then stop rattling. I have no idea where it is. It was close though. Whew. Day 12. Another exciting morning. I just walked by this and I was wondering, that's weird. There's like a fire pit and it looks like concrete all the way across. Man made. But then I saw this little bump. This is the Grizzler. Let's take a look-see. I don't need water. We'll see how things are down there. Yeah, it looks like there's water in there. Just a little bit of algae in there too, floating around. It looks like you can kind of reach in with a long arm, although you wouldn't want to rest your weight on the top of this. There is a little plastic scoop here, but I don't know, you're going to need long arms. There is a lot of water in there, though. I'm glad I brought extra so I didn't have to filter that, though. Look, the water cache. I'm, I have no idea where I am right now. <laughs> Probably about 27 miles outside of Mike's. Alright, class of 2018. There's water on the bottom. That's about it. Message board. Sandy Road Water Cache. Yeah, we're at the Sandy Road Water Cache. Right around mile 145.4. Finally leaving the state park area into private property. I was wondering, where's Mirror Woods? To your left. Look at that. It's... Let's see what's here. I thought it was like right on the side. Of the trail but it's right off they have a little spot to tie your horse oh there's someone down here i'm under the little canopy there's a water tank some treats looks like lemonade they have all sorts of things here a couple of picnic benches it's just nice to be in the shade 
the people who haven't seen all the PCT videos, <laughs> this will be weird, but everyone that has seen them, you've seen all this before. Drop off books, pick up new ones. There's cutouts of them here, and there's actually a shower and outhouse over there. And garbage! Oh, garbage. Pretty cool. My feet are dirty, and they aren't in the best shape. But oddly enough, they've been in worse. There's a haze over those mountains from the smoke from the fire I saw earlier. Even if we go up there in a few days, I don't know if we're going to see as much. Well, here's to hoping. I am a lot closer, so the smoke looks bigger. I'm not sure if it's bigger because the fire is bigger or the smoke just looks bigger. I wonder how that will affect us, if at all. Everything's dirty. I can't wait to take a zero and clean everything off. I stopped actually um, a little before the intersection to Paradise Valley just because I found a campsite with really little wind. And it's super windy out and the chances are good that I won't be able to find a site with uh, protection from the wind. So I'm going to have to do like 18 miles tomorrow. I might just cut it early and save the last four miles or so for the last day because it's all downhill can't wait to take that zero it's now day 13 it's about seven o'clock and i'm taking off i'm going to pass that road to paradise valley and i'm going to head north into the newly opened pct segments and hopefully i'm making the right choice <laughs> off i go next water source is 8.6 miles or something like that Check out these super low clouds over here. Over here too. They're below me, I'm not even that high up. Anytime you're just walking and you're above the clouds or fog, whatever you want to call it, it's pretty awesome. This is probably fog, I don't know, it's really low. There's no way it can be clouds, but it looks like clouds from up here. Really pretty. I would love to do time lapse up here, but I gotta get going. I have long two days, so. No, uh uh. I'm now crossing Highway 74. To the left, one mile is Paradise Valley Resort. I'm gonna keep going. I have enough food in my bag. I need to eat all of it, loosen the weight. And I'm off. This is it. Sticking to my decision. I'm at about mile 154. I don't know if this is the same fire as the one we saw before. But at least the smoke's going away from us. This is due west from mile 154. I don't know. Looks like it's going south. But it's still burning. It's much less than it was yesterday, if that's the same thing. Hopefully it ends.
area is pretty cool. There's just giant boulders everywhere. Sometimes it makes for hard hiking. A lot of rock scrambling. But, and look off to the side, you can see all the wreckage from the fires. There are all the burned down trees they cut up and dragged off to the side so we can keep going on this trail. There's more wreckage off to the side. I haven't seen any poodle dog bush yet. <laughs> But, I don't think I have anyway. Yeah, and look, straight ahead, more huge boulders just everywhere. It's pretty cool. It's a cool place. Definitely recommend going, and a huge bird just flew by. Look at that. Wow. Definitely recommend coming through here. This is mile 155.4. This is Penrod Canyon Stream. As you can see, there's a big pool of water there, and there's nice rock you can actually squat out on and try to fill up. Water's murky, and it's stagnant, but there's a lot of water here. If you really need to, you can get some. You can go down there a little. Just as stagnant. In fact, it looks darker down there. But it's a place to go. If you really have to. This is interesting. Here's a pine cone. It's one of these gigantic ones. And you can see the ends all chewed up. And they're all the pieces. I wonder what animal dragged this up here and ripped, ripped apart all the little, I don't know, things to get at the pine seeds in between. Well, that's a lot of work that that thing just did. This thing is not light. Yeah. Wonder what did that? Could be a squirrel? I don't know. Did someone get bored while they're hiking? Has to be a person. Funny. Look at these cactus, all these purple flowers are starting to bloom now. I'm not sure how much more they bloom before they start. I don't know, rotting away like that back thing in the middle, but everything's getting more colorful. I'm right around mile 161 and a half maybe. We are just going higher and higher. And look at that to the east of us. So much space. I wonder if that's Palm Spring somewhere down there. I don't know. A look at that fire. I don't know, I can't tell if it's getting worse or what. But I think from here we're gonna wrap around. I might not see it as much. We'll see. This is how I've been hiking some days. Hold a pole with these two fingers and hold a bar and this and stuff your face every now and then. I don't know if it's hiker hunger kicking in, but I eat a bar and I'm okay. Then like an hour later, I'm starving again. I gotta eat another bar, an hour later I'm starving again. <laughs> uh, I swear the first week I didn't feel hungry at all. Now I'm feeling hungry much more often. very thirsty and it's a long way back come on Cedar Springs make me happy San Bernardino National Forest Cedar Spring remote site but where's the water come on man you guys couldn't have put up some signs Oh, I see some water coming out of the little stream there. Barely a trickle, but I gotta find the cisterns. After you hit that sign, just take a left, follow the stream, stay on the right side. And this big green horse trough comes up. And it's pretty clean water. There's some stuff on the top floating, but for the most part, the water just comes out through there. And then 
flows off the edge there so it actually diverts most of the things that are floating on it and up further is where it's sort of dammed off and then feeds into the pipe but it's a pretty good water supply as of April 3rd Cedar Springs oh, look at all this fire damage all around just burnt trees some living I wonder how those survived it's amazing that throughout all the burn that some survived you know Crazy, isn't it? Yeah. We're about a mile away from the site we were going to, but Enrique here saw this campsite. It worked out wonderfully and it's beautiful. When did you start, Enrique? I started on Saturday, March 24. And we are rocking so far. So we far? Are, uh, uh, April 3rd, are we? Uh, I lost my count. 3rd, man. yeah, 3rd. <laughs> you started two days after me and we're. Still all yeah, caught up. Um, no, this has been great. Yeah. I'm glad we found this. Yeah. Spot here. This site's awesome. It. Even the rock. I can't wait to have dinner, man. Dinner. I know, I gotta eat. <laughs> got the sunset over there with all the smoke. Yeah. And then we get to watch the, the fire, I guess. Now well, we can't see. It. Oh, yeah, we could. Maybe in the dark we could actually see the fire. Yeah, maybe in the dark. Uh, huh. That is a controlled burn, by the way, so no worries. We found that out. It's all good in the neighborhood. Yep. Day 14, it's 6.30 a.m., sun's rising, and I'm off to hit the closure point, and then head downhill, and then hopefully head up to Idlewild. Day 14! like this slow me down or is it more because I pull out my camera every time I see a tree like this and it slows me down <laughs> I'm at the Forbes Junction now this is the bottom part of the down and then we get to go up I don't know where but we're gonna go about another thousand feet up in the next three miles <laughs> it's gonna be a doozy that way here we go we're almost at the junction with Splitler. Spitler. Almost there. So we're at the top. As you can see, we are at the top. Well, we did come down from up there earlier. It's fascinating from here, we're almost at the uh, junction. It is 
on the left side there are trees and on the right side it just burnt trees dead and you can actually see the erosion of the dirt from the loss of plant life look at that just all dead trees still interesting how one side burned up and one side did not isn't it the things you see out here along the PCT there's a bunch of little logs in the way and the split the creek junction goes this way there are no signs or anything but there's a gate right here there's nothing saying that it's closed Enrique is trying to see if we have to go further but okay. I think this is it so, no, uh, what happens is that Apaches... this is it we are at the Spitler trail intersection beautiful views all around and we are going to start heading down Someone said it's gnarly up here, but whatever that means. Whatever that means, we still have to take it, right? Yeah, it's either that or go the other way back down, which is just as gnarly. So, yeah. Here we go. Let's go for it. Screwed either way, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Get this going. From the Splitler Creek turnoff, if you come down just a little bit, right where that blue dot is, this is gut hooks, by the way. There is a nice stream here, plenty of water. Up above here, there's a couple of little spots with dripping water, kind of dirty, but this spot's really good water. So, make it down to here and you got plenty of clean running water to hit. Does anybody know what this plant is? I've been seeing it around for a little while, but this is the first time I've seen flowers on them. But they're really pretty. I think these are really fragrant. I've been smelling them here and there everywhere, but I didn't know what it was, so I haven't touched them or anything. But I have been smelling them. They are, they smell really nice. Or I smell really bad and it smells decent. Yeah, who knows. There's Lake Hemet way out there. And the little picnic area I'm trying to get to should be right to the east of there. And the road should be right before the lake. And out here, there's all these buildings and stuff like homes and I don't know what that all is. There's a nice home there. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> Time to keep going. This is how I'm geared out today. That's probably around noon or something. I don't know. The sun's getting really strong. So I really want to get my Coron Bell out. And as you can see, I stashed it back there. Impossible, right? So how am I supposed to get it out? This work once before. Let's try it again. Ta-da! So here's a whole bunch of poodle dog bush. It's off to the side, way off the trail. Looks like most of it's dead. There's a nice live one in there. All furry and weird looking. Too bad we didn't get to see the flowers on it, but oh well. I don't smell anything either. I guess because they're long dead. We're taking this little road down. It's intersected off of Splitner Trail. And this road should take us to a campground where we're just gonna drink a lot of water. I think last night when I got to camp and into the morning between eating, brushing my teeth, and wetting my little dry wipes to clean myself off, I only used half a liter so basically I sipped water three or four times <laughs> throughout the night. I have not been drinking enough water. It's pretty bad. I'm wearing down. I cannot wait to drink a ton of water. <sighs> this is the first time I've seen myself in the mirror in seven days. I need a good scrubbing. It's a mess. Got like little blisters on my arms for the sunburn. Legs are so. Big scratch back here from climbing over a log. Alright, so there's a big scratch over here from climbing over a log. This is all dirt. 
This is dirt, nice ring of dirt. Over here, I guess this is from climbing over burnt logs. Same thing on the other side somewhere. Oh, maybe I wiped oh, There it is. The pants are dirty. I am just an incredible mess. I washed my hands. I thought I washed my hands at one of the streams that we crossed. My hands are still filthy. I don't know how my hands are still so dirty. Look at that. My hands are. Look how clean my hands are. I used soap today just now. <laughs> look at that. But my nails are gross. Same thing. Look at me, man. Look at my toenails. And... Yeah. Yeah. How do we get so dirty? And oh, my hands are. Check out this blister. Look at that guy. You taking a picture of your blister? Yeah. Blister with that. That is pretty cool. I think it's gotten bigger since the last time we looked at it. I'm a mess. Yep. Guess what? That's what you signed up for. I'm at the Bluebird Ridge Inn, just outside of Idlewild. I'm in Wren. I'm just gonna zero here. Tonight, I'm here with uh, another hiker. He's gonna stay at night, and then tomorrow, I'm just gonna be myself, and I'm just gonna relax and do nothing. Just gonna go get laundry, postage, uh, about to eat and put my feet up for as much time as humanly possible here until Friday morning. Here's a salad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First time for veggies. <laughs> Maybe I won't die. You will not die after all.